In this video, we will briefly take a look at the new features and capabilities coming with Extreme Cloud Native 24.2 with regards to migration. We have a host of tools and solutions with Extreme Cloud Native 24.2 with regards to migration. It starts with a new tool set called the Comms Migration SDK, a private SDK that our services and our partners will be able to utilize to greatly accelerate migration from any platform into cloud native. Additionally, we have design accelerators, features within the design environment that allow direct import of designs. Previously, we had PDF design import, and new to 24.2, we have docx import. We have our existing optimization tool, rationalization, and with 24.2, we have a lot of new user experience features and improvements around this product. Then we have a new feature in 24.2 with direct from Design Manager migration. This is the ability to export pages and components from your existing thick client extreme into the cloud. And finally, as ever, we have our professional services fully equipped to help you regardless of your migration requirement. Coming with 24.2, you can now export pages and components directly from Design Manager and then import them into DAS to start your new communication designs. Now, some of these features may not be fully supported at this time. Pages in particular come with additional advanced features such as language layers and design layers that are not supported. But for the most part, your designs, your images, your content will be exported and directly imported into DAS for your new communications. So let's take a look at how that works. What we see here is a standard design page as seen in Designer in the Designer Production tool. Uh, we have logos, we have tables, text boxes, etc. and it looks to be a statement. We go to Design Manager. Assuming that you have in the System Settings Integration tab your Dynamic Asset Service set up correctly and you are logged in as an OTDS user, you will now see a new context option on the right click on a library. You can right click and select Convert to DAS and this will assume that you wish to export all your design pages in that library or you can do this on an individual object basis so that page we just looked at here the premium notice I'm going to go ahead and convert this to DAS now we get the first option here as to what level of uh, versioning we wish to export here and on the next page we get to specify where we're writing the archive file to and the log file. The log file is important here. This is going to list all the features that are not supported. So we will analyze the content that we're, we're exporting uh, and give you the heads up as to exactly what kind of reworking might be necessary once it's in the cloud native product. You can get that log immediately by clicking test, but you'll get the same information when you export. I'll go ahead and export here. And as you'll see, we're creating this list of all the things that we're finding that might need some attention as we go, whether that be fonts, whether that be features in table rows that are not supported. And once we're done here, we have a zip file, we have a log for reference, and we're ready to go on to the next stage, and that's importing that same page into Cloud Native. So here we are in the Cloud Native product, and I'm now ready to bring that page into DAS. I'm currently in the, De the Design Asset Library, and I've filtered on pages. Uh, it is no, not currently here. What we need to do now is use our standard import feature here and select our file. There's our page demo export that I created. We can open this. We'll click Next, and this will go ahead and import that page. It takes just but a moment. We have success and close. So now if I search for my policy document. There's our policy premium notice just being created. I can go ahead and open this up now in Cloud Native and you'll see a pretty faithful representation of that same design that we just saw in our designer tool from Designer Production. Uh, obviously, you would now then to take a look at the uh, take a look at the, the log file and make sure that you account for the things that uh, would not necessarily work. But from a design export uh, position here, we have very, very quickly brought over the content, the variables, the images, the designs, uh, and you're ready to start work on the, the cleanup and moving this application into the cloud native. When it comes to our design accelerators, the PDF design import feature that was added in 23.2 has been improved with more user experience features and capabilities. But what is net new in 24.2 is the ability to import docx files directly, very similar in manner to the PDF design import feature. So let's take a look at that. Similar to the PDF import feature that was added in 23.2, 
the docx files that you intend to import directly into cloud native do need to be previously added to the design asset library and approved so that they can be selectable by the user creating the content you'll see here i have two documents uh, an employee handbook and a, a letter a confirmation letter so we're creating a communication here uh, for a hr process I now go over to my communication designer. I have a welcome kit started, a welcome kit communication. So what we've pre-created here, of course, is a communication set. We've mapped a data file, so we have variables available to us, and that will be important because we want to be able to account for variables in any imported docx file. But what I'll first do here is bring in that handbook. The first thing we need to do is add a new document. This document is going to be the HR handbook. You'll notice now we have a create from docx file checkbox. When selecting this, the first thing we must do is select this docx file that we intend to import. These are the files that we've previously loaded to DAS. I will select my employee handbook. The next thing we want to do is, uh, because we're going to be creating content in DAS here, uh, we might want this opportunity to prefix any content that's, bring, that's being brought in. So I'm just going to HR underscore this as a prefix to the sections, paragraphs, clauses, pages, etc. that will be created in this process. The last thing we need to take uh, note of is the clause splitting method. We do create content from the imported docx as a section and clause structure. Uh, and there's multiple ways where the process would identify how it separates a clause, one clause from another. Uh, and that is how you select this here. You have a choice of paragraphs or headings. This uh, handbook is, is very heading centric. So I'm going to select headings for our input option. And once we're done here, we simply hit create. And what's going to happen now is the docx file is going to be ingested. And automatically, we will create a page with a frame. And we will create the section and clause content directly. So here is the content section. Here is a section. I can open this. And you will see now we have our selection of sections and clauses. Now, what you may note uh, or see when you take this approach is there might be something that it doesn't handle correctly or it may have split somewhere you don't need it to do. We've accounted for that as well. Here's an example, perhaps, where this header, how we work, you may want it to actually become part of the section below. Uh, that can be accounted for straight in the product. I can select both the previous and, uh, and the one before, uh, the, the one following, and use this option up here to merge those clauses. Uh, and go ahead and there we go. We've very, very simply fixed any one or any number of the issues you may encounter when creating a large number of clauses like this. Similarly, if you wish to split them, uh, you can simply select inside the clause and we have an option to, to split the clause too. So uh, any, any slight differences or unexpected creation of content for, in the way of clauses in this import feature uh, can be easily cleaned up at this, uh, at this point in the process back at the communication level. Now that we have our handbook in place, I want to also bring in that cover letter. So again, I'm going to create another document. We'll just call this the, uh, the letter for now. I'm going to similarly create from a docx file. I'm going to go ahead and select the letter confirming employment. I'm going to insert that. Uh, again, a prefix. We'll call this one HR letter. Uh, I'm going to leave the, the clause splitting at paragraphs for this one. We'll hit create. Uh, we're probably going to want this letter to be placed prior to the handbook in the listing, so we'll just move this around. But we'll, you'll see that we've got letter content here, we've got a letter section and clauses created here. And in this case, we've correctly identified the variables that were in the docx file too and substituted them for what we had in the communication set for this, uh, this particular HR letter communication. So as you see, it's very, very quick and easy to create content from DocX. Uh, we, we create the documents, the pages, the sections, the clauses for you. Nothing needs to be pre-created other than a communication. And it's uh, obviously it's a communication set as well. So a very, very good, powerful new feature, especially for those organizations that do a lot of their, their current uh, document creation with Word templates. So DocX import, big time saver here. So finally, let's take a look at the Document Migration SDK. This is going to be a private SDK provided to our services and limited partners to enable them to greatly accelerate the move of designs from any platform into cloud native. Those platforms can include our competitors or even other open text platforms. Now, in regards to other open text platforms such as Expression or StreamServe, we will be providing those transforms required to convert content exported from the one and import it directly into cloud native. 
for any other platform, our services folks or partners will be able to write their own transforms around any other structured data format. So let's take a look at a demonstration here of taking an SSD file from StreamSurf Storyteller and importing that as is directly into Cloud Native. So what we're going to see here as a demonstration of the SDK uh, is the ability to import content from StreamServe Storyteller. Uh, so this is going to be an example of what the SDK can do uh, when we provide it to our services and partners. Again, this is not going to be a product. What we're seeing here is the, uh, is the exact template we're going to show in Cloud Native momentarily as seen in its native uh, uh, StreamServe Storyteller product. And you can see in the tree here, there's actually a number of pages as part of this communication set. So how this is going to work uh, in Communication Designer right now, we do not have a communication for this, but what we do need to have uh, is a communication set. That's the only thing that needs to be referenced here. The communication and all the relevant content will be created here. So this is a command line tool. Uh, what I'm showing you here is obviously just executing that command line tool with some key parameters here. The first one being the SSD file that's been exported from StreamServe Storyteller. This is that StreamServe content. We also need to have a name for the, uh, the inbound communication uh, and the subsequent pages and documents within. But most importantly, we need the ID of the, uh, of the communication set that will drive the personalization of this content. And that's all that's required. So as I hit execute here, uh, it takes about a moment. Again, uh, depending on how much content you're bringing in, this could take a little bit of time. Well, what's happening here is we're going to go ahead and run this SDK and it's going to use the uh, the conversion process that we've created for stream, StreamServe and it's going to use the APIs built in and inherent to Cloud Native to ingest and create that content. So if we come back here now into our communication designer and refresh, you're going to see that we have now a demo SSD import communication that's been created for us. Uh, that was done dynamically created via that SDK. And opening this up, you'll notice that on the inside we have a document using that name and all those pages that we saw in the SSD file or we saw in Storyteller have been created. And as a last demonstration here, I'll go ahead and open the page too so you can get a good look at uh, how similar this is to the original design, uh, including the personalization. The variables are highlighted here because we had them in the communication set. There's one that I deliberately removed for the communication set just to show that we'll create the variables and highlight the fact that this variable is not part of your communication set as well. We don't lose rules in this uh, in this import either. Uh, obviously, there is going to be some translation issues with rules. We don't attempt yet to, to make your rules uh, in place, uh, but we don't lose them. They become events in Extreme uh, in the Cloud Native tool so that they can be referenced and recreated. But this is how quick and easy it can be to create content that has been exported from StreamServe and create that same content as faithfully as possible in Cloud Native today.